Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Whitlings Prototype. This is episode number 25. We are getting there. <clears throat> Today, we're going to be working on some camera rotation exploration. So, sometimes I really find that sleeping on my issues, I'll just... You know, I've always got the back of my mind running. What is a way to solve this? What are some possible things to try? And last night, or this morning, I actually don't remember when, I think I might have had an idea. So as of right now, our camera offset is a diagonal line. It's going up through the corner towards the camera, right? But <clears throat> as we saw with our <coughs> excuse me, as we saw with our quaternion rotation, things went a little bit pear-shaped there. So, I had this idea to keep the camera rotation flattened. Right? So the camera rotation would actually be pointing out of the middle of this, or the camera offset would point out of the middle of the cube. Somewhat, it's a, aligned to one axis. <clears throat> right? Aligned to one cardinal axis. That way, when we decide to rotate along the Y, we can just use this up. Now, this does have some drawbacks that I imagine will uh, throw a monkey in the wrench, as they say, <clears throat> in our plans in the future. But it's a good start. If we can get our camera rotating around a cube along the y-axis, then um, we can start figuring out how we want to do the other, the other axes rotations. There's one more thing I thought of that might be a little bit of a problem, or maybe we could solve it fairly easily. Um, if we have our whittling, and we go to follow mode on the whittling, maybe we can just do like a shoulder offset, right? And the shoulder offset would allow the camera to follow the whittling around corners, but switching between this and this, I think, could get a little bit confusing. So we'll just have to see. We'll just have to code that bridge when we get there. <clears throat> so let's try modifying our code in such a way that our offset is aligned on one axis. Actually, I think it would be aligned on... Essentially what we're doing is we're taking a full axis aligned rotation and then rotating that by 45 degrees along a single axis. So it should still be on a plane. That's a good way to describe it. We want to keep it on this plane that cuts halfway through the cube. <clears throat> So let's give it a shot. <laughs> kind of tempted to get rid of most of this. Yeah, let's um let's comment this out. Whoa, hey, whoa. Thought I did a control KC there. Must have hit a wrong key. There we go. <clears throat> So this camera offset direction, <clears throat> we don't want it to be going up on the Y, right? And if we run this now, we should be directly on the side. That is correct. So that means camera start, calculate target to camera. Uh, let's go in awake. Camera offset direction normalize. And 
And then I think what I want to do, oops, is take this transform position and add to it vector three dot up times distance. And that should put us back to where we were. <clears throat> Interesting. Hmm. Maybe what we need to do is calculate the direction, normalize it, and then, um, let's see. Let's try that. Start target position plus camera offset direction plus vector three dot up. Offset dot normalize. And then what we can do is just say start target position plus offset times distance. Nice. Okay, cool. Things are working there. So we've got this offset. This vector 3 dot up, this is actually going to need to change. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, when we rotate this in around a non-y axis, this is going to need to be modified. So let's make a note of that. Although this is an awake, so we could always start off from up. Hello, Arthur. How's it going? I am working on camera work, which is one of my great kryptonites. So I've got my camera centering on the object I select. I can zoom in with the mouse wheel, zoom out, you know, select different pieces, spin them around. We've got our little guy who walks the path. But my current goal is to be able to hit the right key and rotate 90 degrees around the cube that I'm centered on. And that's that's causing me some, uh, not distress, but it's, it's work. It's tricky stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, my, my teaching schedule is pretty crazy, so... Um, I just I just try and post an hour when I can. <clears throat> yeah, so sometimes they're after midnight here. Uh, like now, it's just afternoon. So hopefully I could... Hopefully at some point in the future, I'll be able to normalize my streaming schedule. But for this semester, it's just going to be a little bit goofy. So let's see. I've got this camera offset direction. And that is pointing in two dimensions the direction that I want the camera to be offset at. So 
So I think what I'm going to do now is <clears throat> instead of trying to make the camera move, equals an instance of. Hmm, interesting. I don't know too much about those. Programming object oriented. I'm assuming that's what poo means. That's pretty funny. We usually call them oop, but both are um, <laughs> both are pretty silly names. <laughs> so let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to draw a line where my camera offset direction thinks it should be. And it should be sticking out of our first cube. Did I not save? <sighs> what is this? Oh, debug path renderer. That's fine. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Oh, right. I have to hit the right arrow. No worries. No worries. Bump. Okay, cool. So this is red line represents my camera offset direction, and that looks correct to me. So I want to generate a, another vector that's coming out of the cube on this corner, but on the same plane, and that should be able to give me a... Um, it should be able to give me the new new direction that I want my camera offset to be. So start rotation, this looks right. Um, our end rotation is going to be rotate by times start rotation. So the way that you apply rotations in Unity, or just uh, when you apply rotations, with a quaternion, which is what Unity represents rotation, um, you just multiply them. <clears throat> but it's interesting because the order of multiplication is important. It's not like addition where you could say x plus y equals y plus x. When you rotate two quaternions, the order matters, definitely. And I'm going to try rotating it, but 90 degrees on the y-axis. I'm going to make a note to do. This should change based on the local rotation of the camera. So we've got target position, and I want to add end rotation dot Euler angles dot normalized. <clears throat> Multiplying it by just this hard number three, magic number, I guess, so that the line actually sticks out of the cube. What? That is not what I expected at all. Look, it's even misaligned a little bit. Ooh. Hmm. So I assumed that would be rotating this vector by 90 degrees. <sighs> I always... I'm not sure about which order to multiply them in. Let's try now. See, that's even worse. That's way different. Oh my goodness. So 
So this is our camera offset direction. <clears throat> Rotate towards. Hmm. So I guess the goal is we've got our cube, we've got our current vector, which I'm representing as red, so coming out of the center to here. I want to rotate this 90 degrees. So that the new vector comes out of here. And I'm trying to rotate it around this y axis, which right now I'm just using global y. Eventually this will change. I do believe that there is a vector 3 rotate around. Is that a transform? Hmm. Do I want to build an entire transform? It's possible. It might be a good solution. <clears throat> I bet there's some real maths, though. Let's try that out. Oh, wait a minute. I have this transform. But this transform's way different than I want my... Ooh, okay, okay. I think I see a plan here. So I'm going to have an empty game object, and I'm going to call this camera... Offset transform. And I'm going to use the Z forward as the direction of the offset. So I think rotated by 135. Okay. Ah, local. There we go. Not 135. That's pointing out of this corner. So maybe 225. There we go. So this is my camera offset transform. <clears throat> and what's awesome is right now what I could do is just rotate this around the Y by an either positive 90 or negative 90. And we should get the correct results. So let's see, rotation around. Let's serialize a private transform for camera offset transform. Link it up. Cool. Now our script knows about it. And let's see. So, when I hit the right button, I'm going to store the camera offset transform rotation. <clears throat> and then maybe what we could even do... I want to rotate around vector three dot up ninety degrees. 
Use transform.rotate instead. Okay. <clears throat> and rotate returns nothing. That means we're actually rotating this object. So end rotation is equal to camera offset transform rotation. I'm kind of tempted to rotate it back. So it's like we rotate it in space, calculate the new rotation, and then rotate it back to its original orientation. And that way we could slowly change it. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to leave that alone for now. We can move this to do up here. Oh, shoot. You know what? Instead of doing vector 3 dot up, let's do camera offset transform dot up so this will be its local up that's awesome that's totally what we want we can get rid of these and let's see what happens and let's use start rotation euler angles normalized instead let's see if that changes anything in theory, it should not. Uh-oh. I don't know. Let's see what happens. <laughs> right key. Oh, my. That is very wrong. <laughs> oh, hey, but check it out. This rotated. It rotated the wrong way, but that's cool. We can just change this to negative 90. Um, nice. So this worked. Our green line is screwing the pooch. But what about our red line? I bet our red line is screwing it in the exact same way. Oh, you know what we want to do? We want to use forward. Yeah. Okay. So instead of just getting the Euler angles, start rotation. Oh, no. Camera offset transform dot forward. And I guess here, after we've modified the transform, we should be able to add camera offset transform forward again. Bing. Boom. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so we have our start rotation and we have our end rotation. I'm a little bit worried, however, that the... Start rotation and end rotation when I used those. Hmm. Yeah, when I used those to draw the line, things weren't working. It might have been because we were taking the target position and adding the actual quaternion to it. But how about this? We'll do an is rotating equals true. And I've got this loop here. To ease the rotation, I'm slurping between start and end. Okay, so I think this is what we want to do. We want to 
store. Oh, no, 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 not in this. We want to store this in the camera offset transform. That rotation. There we go. And the camera offset direction is going to be equal to the transform forward. Don't need to normalize it anymore. <clears throat> yeah, it's fine. This is super confusing for me. Anytime I have to deal with 3D math and rotations, um, it's, it's always just sort of a pot shoot. I've been working with rotations only a little bit over my time practicing um, coding. So, And quaternions are very weird. They're basically... They are efficient representations of rotation in a 3D world. Um, that's fine, Arthur. You know what I could do? Before I test this, let me hop back over to my other scene and show you a more interesting... I think it's level test. <clears throat> yeah, so I got my level test. Oh! Oh my goodness. Oh, our main camera doesn't have a camera controller. Oh boy. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Let's just turn this off. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like it looks like my testing is uh, pretty broken. There we go. But you can see I've got my Whitlings walking around, following the paths correctly. That jump should not be happening, but it's because I'm in the middle of doing my camera work. <clears throat> so things are coming along. It's just, um, it's slow work. And it's really important to make sure that your camera reacts in like a, a normal way or a simple way. Yeah, this pathing was super tricky, but I had a lot of fun doing it. So once we get the camera controls working a little bit better, the user should be able to spin around the world in all six axes and, you know, look at the puzzle from all directions, which is one of the most important parts of this game, I feel. Let's go back to our camera test. Okay. <laughs> it rotated at the end there. Oh, this transform position. Thanks, man. I agree. It's starting to come together. It's really sad. I started work on this like two years ago, and I got a couple months in, and then there was a massive hardware mistake, and... I basically lost all of my work. My original work, I had did it in Unreal Engine, but I wanted to move to Unity just for a prototype, and uh, hopefully we'll see how it goes from there. <clears throat> I'm not really pushing the engine too much. Unity can't go too far. Unreal's a lot better, uh, but... Yeah, I just wanted to prototype in here, and then if it is fun, maybe I'm considering writing my own engine, which is quite a doozy.
shoot. Hmm. <laughs> I find it very strange. Um, let's just print out camera offset direction. Or even better, let's draw a line. Let's normalize it, multiply it by 3. Let's do a color dot yellow. And then it lasts for 100 seconds. And what we should get is this nice fan that moves from See, that's really bizarre. It didn't Yeah, it didn't seem to to do a fan at all. Camera offset transform. <clears throat> Let's watch that guy. Hmm. <clears throat> what should be happening is it should be slowly rotating over w the period of one second. What curve do I have on my camera? <clears throat> okay, this curve. Rotate duration is one, that's right. Oh! <laughs> Less than! Dang it! Uh, <laughs> every time, I swear. Not every time, but whenever I fall for that trick, it just gets me. So, if we're in this body... We're just going to set it, the rotation, equal to the end rotation. And we're going to say, is rotating equals false. So yeah, the reason it wasn't drawing was because our rotate timer was only greater than our rotate duration when it was done. So maybe it was working the whole time. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Ooh, look at that camera preview. Yeah. Oh, man. Looking good. I don't have enough lights in the scene, but... Oof, oof, that is nice. <clears throat> okay, so we have our camera going out the right direction. So now that we know this camera offset direction, we want to crank it up I guess by one unit on the Y? Oh, by one unit on this up. Let's try that. Camera forward plus camera offset transform rotation oh transform dot up and then we can normalize that
Oh, buddy, look at that go. That is some beautiful shit. And the one second translation doesn't seem too terrible. Uh, we should be able to implement left pretty easily. I can get rid of these line draws now. Positive 90. Oh, error. No, arrow. Nice. So left and right rotation are working. That is pretty cool. What happens if I spam? Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> OK, let's make sure that the user cannot add extra input. So only allow them to rotate the camera if the camera is not already rotating. Let's see what happens if we slow the rotate or we speed up the rotation. 0.2 seconds. That should be very fast. Oof, I don't know about that. That's something we should expose to the user. Um, I'm also going to add in an extra directional light. And. I want to rotate it 180 degrees around on the Y. <clears throat> there we go. So now we've got lighting coming from all directions. Almost. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not quite what I wanted. That's definitely not what I wanted. Let's just do a classic rotate here. There we go. So now we've got lighting on all sides. Life is grand. Very nice. And my little whittling still walks around. Life is good. Let's make a path for him. Uh oh. It's not a. Well, sure. We'll make this path. Mm. Feels good, man. You know, just a couple months of work and... Oh, there's a path with a curve in it to the end. Nice. Yeah, I would say I've been working on this for almost exactly one month. And the prototype is coming together. Let's get rid of our crazy draw here. Cool. I think that's actually it for today. Um, well, we got about 20 minutes left. What else could I do? Something simple.
maybe do some sort of particle effect. So if I rotate this cube, it sees that it's next to these two cubes and little dust particles um, shoot out of the edges around here where they're rotating. I think that might be pretty cool. So we could play around with that. Let's do that. Um, I'm just going to slide this cube out as a little workspace. Let's put our scene in our game back on the same panel. So particle system. Let's call this. Uh, so it's the particle system. Naming stuff is so hard. It's the particle system that plays when two cubes rub together. So cube scrape uh, how about this cube wall scrape particles um, this duration should actually be the same amount of time as the cube rotation Um, I care more about the shape. We don't want a cone. An edge might be cool. Uh, we need four particle systems per edge. That's not quite right. A circle. A circle might be exactly what we want. So let's spin this around. Okay, that's, oh, that's way off. You know what, let's put this at the origin. That's a better idea. We'll work on the back of our start cube. And so let's move this back on the Z by 0.5. Whoa! I guess this is global. There we go. So we'll make the radius 0.5. Very nice. Thickness is 1, arc is 360. Rate over time. 300, sure. I will make the start color maybe like a dirty, maybe like a light dusty brown. Um, start size 0.2. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The start speed is way too high. <clears throat> Let's do a random between two constants. Uh, one and two. How does that look? Not great. <laughs> um, how about 0 0.1 and 0 0.5? A little bit better. The start lifetime is much too high.
I mean, eh. Let's move it over here. I mean, that doesn't look that bad. It's good for testing. Hmm. Let's do maybe emissions. Let's do something like at zero, 200 to 250. And maybe at point two, we'll do like a 30 to 70. Yeah, sure. I'll have a real particle person uh, do the work. Um, <laughs> Ooh, you know, technically, if I have a cube and a cube here, and I spin it this way, only this face, this connecting face is scraping. So I'd only want the particle effect here. If I had another cube here, I don't think I would want that particle effect. It'd actually be easier. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> the idea is that these, uh, these little characters are so stupid that they get to ignore the law of gravity. Um, I do have some power-ups planned where if there was something like this and there was no face, there was no path here, maybe the Whitling would be able to jump up and land and keep walking. But for now, I'm just keeping it as like a simple pipe dream. It's like you have to build the path, but the, the catch is that the Whitlings can walk on every side of every cube. Yeah, it's possible. All of these are just uh, placeholder art as well. I just made some art in... Um, oh, you know what? That didn't look that bad. Let's do a quick test. Um, scripts. Test particles. Or right, let's call this test scrape particles. Oh, you know what? We could just put this in here. Testing. Yeah, the rocks and climbing, that would require a lot of extra animations. Um, and this is just a prototype for now, but if I do decide to like really put this game into production, then it would be very nice to have different types of animations and movement styles across the different faces. And I can delete this test scrape particles. Oh. Is this looping? No, it's not looping. 
Oh, <laughs> I put this in update. That is pretty silly. Maybe this should go in the cube controller. Yeah. Cube controller. Oh, that's in the same class. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> hmm. Well, you know, that's fine for now. I think the most important part is inserting hooks for the artists to just go in and test. So if I had a particle designer, um, they could just come in here, keep playing with the prefab until it felt right. So for me, the more important job is to put a placeholder in and create the logic that would actually spawn or teleport these particle systems here to the scraped sides during the rotate. I think it would be much cooler if spinning it this way had no particles shown. But I think that's it for today. I got a lot more done than I expected. Thanks for coming to hang out, Arthur. Um, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Let's see. Yeah, do you have any questions for me before I go about specific things that I did or just general questions? I wonder if my microphone's picking up that banging that's happening outside. Oh, and you know what? Your text is totally behind my face as well. <clears throat> ah, what's wrong with the cubes? Um, I want all of the the faces to be generated generated procedurally in the end, so that this is the basic path that the users will see. But each face is going to have, like, you know, depending on the biome, it will have different, a different appearance, maybe some extra little trees or, like, a little animal that would be pathing back and forth on the cubes. Although, that, I haven't really thought about that too much. But, yeah, the art is going to be much... Um, much more varied on each of these cubes. I'm hoping to push it to mobile devices as well. So that might cause some issues with memory and, um, you know, just setting things up on mobile devices is a lot more restrictive. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. <clears throat> like I said before, this is a prototype. And so. Once this works and I'm happy, I'm probably going to restart the project for real. I'll keep a fair bit of code, but I'm going to re-architect the project and, you know, start from scratch and improve, improve the architecture from what I learned making the prototype. That's a big mistake that a lot of people make, is they're like, oh, I'm going to build this prototype. And then they get far into it, and they're like, well, you know, we could just use the prototype as the core of the game. That's fine. And it ends up causing a lot of problems in the end. So eventually, all this that you see is probably going to be thrown out. Most of the concepts I've learned are going to stay the same, but I'll rewrite it just to make sure it is more expandable. And at that point, I should have a, a full design document. And so architecting should be a lot less, um, 
I'm not architecting by the seat of my pants, as it were. But I think that is it for today. Thanks for coming and hanging out, Arthur. I will, as always, post these videos up to my YouTube channel, Professor Zesty. And if you want to go back and look at some previous stuff, see how I got up to this point, you have the ability to do that. It is a little bit of time invested. I think I have probably 25 hours of video total, maybe a little more. That's funny, the original version of this <clears throat> was exactly like that. Like, each cube was sort of like dark and dismal and corrupted, and then as you walked over the cube, like, flowers would bloom and it would turn to green, lush. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that idea. I do want some type of mechanic in there to encourage player exploration, and that was what we chose the first time, but it's always a good idea. Growing things is a technically difficult challenge. I mean, I guess you could have the art and you could just scale it up. But, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for coming and hanging out. I will see you next time. Good luck on your projects.